Hello, welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion about personal financial statements and budgeting. And in this video, we're going to focus on budgeting. First, let's take a look at some good reasons for why you need a budget. By having a budget, you'll be able to focus on your income and your expenses. So by having a good budget, you will be able to live within your means and you'll help you spend your money wisely. And by doing those two things, you'll have a better chance of reaching your financial goal. Also important is that you'll help you prepare for any unexpected events and emergencies. Finally, having a budget and using a budget is part of a good, uh, healthy financial habits. So now let's get to it. How do, you, how do you go about creating a budget? The good news is you already did a lot of the legwork because the first step in creating a budget is to have your first, uh, to have a statement of cash flow. So we already did that in our last video. As a tip is uh, better to use the total from the past 12 months so that you'll capture an entire years of spending because uh, we may spend a little bit more money during the holiday season um, to buy gifts for others and maybe uh, spend more money vacationing during the summer months. So using a total from the entire year will capture all those month to month variations. And then we simply divide those um, the total by 12, and that will give you uh, converting from a per year number or annual number to a um, monthly number. Uh, the other useful things to keep in mind is that a budget is just an estimate, so you don't have to be precise. So don't worry about a fractional or a dollar here, a dollar there. Uh, we want to focus on the big pictures. So round your numbers to tens and hundreds of dollars. Another important part of making a budget is besides looking in the past to see what you have done in the past, it's also important to look at what may happen in the future. So if you have any new information such as expected increases in income or reduction in income uh, as well as new expenses, then you will start to make look at your budget and make changes that's necessary. So for example, if your current um, cash inflow is an outflow is not sufficient to reach the financial goals that you want, you may need to either reduce your spending or increase your income. Or sometimes you may need to take out a loan, for example, to buy a new car or to get an education. Be patient with your budgeting process. Typically you'll take a few rounds. So your first try may not be sufficient to reach your goal and you need to make uh, adjustments. Uh, so after you make the necessary adjustments, you can look at whether or not you have sufficient surplus and you allocate the surplus to achieve your financial goal. So once you have developed a budget and use it for a few months and know that you are able to stay within your budget, meaning your budget is realistic, then you can also set up automatic transfer for those surplus funds to go into your savings account or your investment account so that they'll be able to earn returns to help you achieve your financial goal. Now your budget is just a plan. So you may, and it may or may not go according to plan when real life happens. So it's important to record your actual income and expenses so that you can compare it against the plan. And in uh, personal finance, we call that variance. So the variance is the difference between what you plan, meaning the budgeted amount, versus what your actual income and expenses are. And after you have recorded that for a while, you want to review that. So every every quarter or every every month or at least every year, you want to look at how close are you able to um, stick to your budget or your plan and whether or not that's realistic or if you need to make additional adjustments. There are a few important key principles to remember when you're doing budgeting. First and foremost, be realistic. Uh, again, when you compare your actual spending to your budgeted amount, you know whether or not that is realistic for you and your family. So it's very important to create, not just to create a budget, but actually use it and record your actual expenses. The other thing to take into account, uh, 
seasonal expenses. We already talked about that. Holidays, summers. Uh, so keep that in mind. So some months you may have a surplus, and other months you may have a deficit because of those seasonal variations, and that's okay uh, as long as you know that over six months, over a year, you are on track. Um, the other thing that is useful is to look at the unexpected expenses. If unexpected ex expenses keep recurring, then you want to incorporate those into your budget. Uh, some examples are reca uh, car repairs. For example, if you have a low, if you have an older car, and having repair is happens every few months, then you want to budget for it. The same is true for medical expenses. Um, if the, yeah, every month you find out that you are spending more than you budgeted, then you want to update that. And when you have your monthly budget, then you can expand that and convert that into an annual budget as well. Let's use an example to see how we will actually implement and create a budget. Remember Maya and Isis? We have created the statement of cash flows and statement of net worth for them. Now they are ready to use that information to help them create a budget. In addition to the historic cash flow statement, they expect to have an increase in their income. They expect to get a 5% raise. They know that they need to reduce spending. Remember when we did the analysis? Uh, so they, they look at their actual spending and they realize that they are spending a lot of money on eating out and leisure items, meaning that they, uh, so those are discretionary expenses. So they can reduce that. However, when you make a reduction to certain items, you need to be, again, be realistic. For example, if they are reducing the amount of, uh, uh, amount of eating out to restaurants, then they still have to eat. So they may need to then increase their budget for groceries to account for eating more at home. So make sure that you, uh, your budget stay realistic. Uh, other things that they may do is to shop for cheaper alternatives for essential expenses. So we can reduce discretionary expenses, so those are non-essential. For essential expenses, we have to keep them, but we may be able to find cheaper sources. So it's always uh, a good idea to compare and uh, shop and negotiate. So after they do some research and negotiation, they were able to reduce their auto insurance. So that's their uh, current, uh, their plan in terms of going into their budget. They also establish some financial goals. Uh, they uh, remember when we reviewed their financial statements in our last video, we determined that they really need about $15,000 in their emergency fund. So they're hoping to save that and their goal is to have that in 12 months. They also want to have to uh, renovate their kitchen and that they expect that will cost $50,000 and they hope to do that in the next five years. And their long-term goal is to save for retirement. Um, and right now their goal is to put 9% of their income uh, into 401k and then contribute to their Roth IRA. So this is their goal. So let's see how we can use data from their uh, financial statement of, of cash flows to create their budget. So we are taking the actual monthly, tot uh, monthly total that they have from their personal statement of cash flows. So remember that they ha their gross income originally was $8,000, but now they're expected a 5% increase. So $8,000 times 0.05 or 5% is $400. So they're expecting that next year, their income will, go will, have will increase from $800 to $8,400. However, with a higher income, they'll also have to pay more tax. So we assume that the deduction will also increase by 5% because uh, they will pay proportional in tax. So that's $100. So the deduction will go to $2,100. On an after-tax basis, $8,400 minus $2,100 gift $6,300. So that is their estimated income for next year. So that is their budget amount. So we take the actual 
from last year, and we make adjustment. So whatever we as as expected to change, and incorporate that into our budget. So this becomes our monthly budgeted amount. So we have taken care of the expected changes when it comes to income. Next, we're gonna look at spending. So let's see what how they can reduce their spending. Remember, they're gonna increase their grocery budget, but reduce their dis discretionary expenses. And they also were able to get cheaper auto insurance. So here are their expenses. This is the actual amount from last year. First of all, notice that when we convert that to their budget, even without any expected changes, we are rounding up the number. So instead of 2641, we round it to 2650. So that's just uh, rounding up the numbers to make it easier to work with when we're doing budgeting. Again, budgeting, it's important to be accurate, but it does it will not be precise because um, again, it's more important to make it user friendly than uh, make it difficult to use. So we already mentioned that they were able to reduce their insurance. So their car insurance, they're able to go down by $35 a month. Uh, however, uh, since they are planning on eating at home more, they, they know that they will have to increase their grocery budget. So uh, going from $208, subtracting $35 and rounding it, that gives them $175. And 464 plus 50 is about uh, $514. So again, rounding it, remember this is rounded, is about $520. So those were the two major changes to their essential expenses. Next, we're going to look at uh, what they're going to change in terms of their discretionary expenses. Uh, remember, this is where the major changes comes in is their discretionary changes. Uh, they're going to reduce eating out. They're going to do a lot, spend a lot less in uh, leisure. So maybe traveling less or maybe traveling to nearby places instead of far away places, uh, cutting down all the, on their streaming services. Once again, instead of having 10 or 20 subscriptions, they may go down to three or four. Um, so these are the changes that they plan to make. Uh, what you want, or I want you to notice that is by making these changes, they reduce their discretionary expenses to 10% of their expenses. So that is a significant re uh, reduction. As a result of these adjustments, they are able to have a much higher uh, surplus. Before their surplus was $57 a month, now their surplus is $1,100 a month. Of course, that's a huge increase, but you can see that they are making significant uh, sacrifices, particularly when it comes to discretionary spending. So they are reducing their leisure by $550 a month and eating out by $200 a month. So that's almost $700 a month in savings uh, just from cutting down on their discretionary spending. So this is not a an easy sacrifice. Uh, so Based on their surplus, they were hoping to be able to contribute $300 to the emergency fund each month, $300 for the kitchen renovation, and then contribute to uh, $500 to 401k. Now let's see how do these compare to their financial goal. First, let's take a look at their short-term goal. Their short-term goal is to save $15,000 in emergency fund in one year. If they are saving $300 per month, and this is a short-term uh, investment, so they're not gonna earn much in interest, it is unlikely that they'll be able to reach their goal in 12 months. So unfortunately, this won't happen. Uh, and in terms of their intermediate goal, they want to save $50,000 for their kitchen renovation. Currently, they are putting away $300 per month, uh, you assume they can make 8% per year uh, using the time value of money tool that we have learned um, in earlier chapters. We know that they will grow to $22,000 in five years. Again, that is not going to reach the $50,000 goal. Uh, the 
long term goal, they were hoping to save 9% of their gross income. So right now, in their current budget, they are putting away $500. Their monthly gross income is $8,400. So $500 divided by $8,400 is 6%. So 6% is not the 9%. So what can they do? So in order for them to reach their goal, so if they, right now they will not be able to reach either their short-term goal nor their intermediate goal. So one option that they can have is maybe they should delay their uh, plan for renovating their kitchen and focus on increasing their savings to $600 a month over the next year. And that will help them reach the uh, emergency fund goal of $15,000 a lot sooner. Uh, as far as the long-term goal is concerned, it's only 6%. Uh, however, that is much better than what they were doing, which was only $40. So $40, $500 per month is a significant improvement over $40. So they may, so they will adjust their budget again. And in here is not to reduce further expenses because they already make a significant reduction in their discretionary spending, but rather to change their goal. So it goes both ways. Now remember that a plan is simply that, it's a plan. Uh, we need to find out how well were they are they able to implement and execute this plan. To do that, they'll need to compare the plan to what actually happened. So uh, you have to record the actual expenses and compare it to the plan. And if we are not able to implement the plan, we'll have to make additional changes. So let's take a look at Maya and Isis. So here is the budgeted amount. This is the same as what we have um, before. And now they're going to record what actually happened. And then the variance is the budgeted amount minus the actual amount. So for income, because they both um, earn a monthly uh, salary, so there's no discretion there. Uh, but they were lucky and get a gift for $150. So they were able to have some surprises uh, for this month. And when it comes to expenses, uh, this is what actually happened. Again, not surprising. Uh, the mortgage payment and their car loan is very close to their budgeted amount. It's just a rounding error. Uh, so same for student loan. What will uh, fluctuate a lot more are uh, the other items. Um, so for utility, uh, that may that may vary. So here they were actually doing better than expected. So the budget, the actual amount is less than the budgeted amount. So they have a so they actually spend less money. Uh, that's not true for food and grocery store. They spend more than what they budgeted. But again, the differences is not significant. So overall, uh, the budgeted amount for essential expenses is $4,600. And they actually spend $4,500. So they spend less than what they budgeted. Next, let's take a look at what they have planned for their discretionary uh, spending. They have really made a concerted effort to stick to their budget. Uh, looks like they are doing a reasonably good job. Uh, they spend a little bit more eating out than they had budgeted, but again, it's not significant. Uh, overall, they were able to stay very close to their budget. They spend actually once again less uh, on the uh, discretionary spending than they had budgeted. So overall, they were they spend altogether uh, combining the essential expenses and discretionary expenses. Uh, expenses, they spend $159 less than what they budgeted for. So they were able to put more money. So their original budgeted surface surplus was $1,100. They were able to actually have a surplus, an actual surplus of uh, $1,400. So they were able to put more money towards their emergency, emergency fund than they had originally budgeted. So it looks like Maya and Isis are doing a good job in terms of staying true to their budget and their budget is also relatively realistic because they were able to uh, spend within the budgeted amount. 
Now, keeping track of your expenses may not be the easiest thing to do. Uh, so there are tools that you can use. One is create your own spreadsheet. This is simply uh, at the end of the day or at the end of the month, sit down and download your record from the credit card and from the bank so that you can record them. Uh, some banks and credit card also have tools, but they are separate, so you have to combine the number. And so it can be a combination of your own spreadsheet along with the bank records and credit card records. There are additional tools from the bank and credit card that you can take advantage of. You can, uh, but you can set up uh, expenses by category to match what your budgeted amount is. Uh, you can also set limit on your credit card to alert you that you have you are coming close to your uh, budgeted amount for this particular category. So there are a lot of tools that may be available to you. Uh, you can also get apps. Uh, again, those changes all the time. If you're using an app, again, be very careful about your personal uh, information and privacy and what information is being shared by whom. Some of the things that you want to consider are privacy and security. Um, and also how easy it is to use the particular tool. Uh, it is important for the tool to be easy to use, otherwise uh, it will be difficult for you to stay, uh, keep, keep, your, uh, keep, your, keep track of your expenses. And that is a very important part of financial planning. To summarize, you can use a personal financial statements to monitor how well you are in terms of achieving your financial goal. Another motivation for creating these personal financial statements, including your budget, is that banks oftentimes require this information when you do a loan application for a car loan or a mortgage. Uh, also, for some of you who may want to start your own business, Again, the banks, the suppliers, and sometimes even customers want this type of information to make sure that your business will be viable. So you can, by creating your personal financial statements, you learn to create that for your business as well. This ends the module on personal financial statements. I will see you in the next module soon.